Hey, Jeff Dorian here from TheSoapGuy.com. Today I want to answer a question. This is one of the most common questions that I get. I get customers and potential customers calling me and asking me, Hey, Jeff, do you use lye in your soap? Well, the short answer is yes. The long answer is yes. The most appropriate answer is you cannot make soap without lye. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about this and why this is true. I want to give a big shout out to Kathy Miller at MillerSoap.com. She's been answering this question for a long time. She's been helping out a lot of novice soap makers, people just coming into the business. And right there, when you go to her page, she has scrolling right across the page. It says, no lie, no soap. I have referred hundreds and hundreds of people to her sites. Have a look at what Kathy has to say because she has tons of really cool information. It'll help you explain to your customers better as you start making and selling soap about what the whole soap business is about and why you have to have why in order to have soap. Okay? So I'm going to do, I'm not a chemistry major, so this is going to be really basic. But here's the idea of why you need lye. Okay? Number one, when people first started making soap, including our colonial ancestors and including Europeans, is what they would do is they would take water and they would run it through wood ash. When it went through the wood ash, it would pick up the lye and then they would slowly but surely, it, it would drip out the bottom of either a barrel or an ash container. Sometimes in the bottom of the barrel they might put some straw or some other thing so that they would hold the ash up and then as the water came through, the water that was left would have lye in it. Okay. Now, they would let some evaporation take place so that that lye would get more concentrated. That lye water, which we don't do anymore, most people aren't making soap this way, is where the lye would come from. They didn't know the chemical composition. They didn't know any of those things. All they know, knew is that if you take the lye water and you mix it with the oils and the fats, the colonists mostly used beef dri drippings, pork drippings, this stuff that they would save. They would mix it with this lime water, okay, and that was the basic formula for how they made soap. And if you were making soap in Italy or Greece and you were using the fat from olive oil, you would go through the same process. You would leach the water through this wood ash, that water itself would then be mixed with the fats and then you would have the basic ingredients for soap making, okay. So nowadays we don't do that. When, you, when the water goes through, it comes out, it's, it's dark, it's brown, it looks disgusting. If you want a really ugly bar, you probably make soap that way. The other thing is that it doesn't get enough of the lye because we know the exact formula now. So that soap in general, when you make it that way, comes out a little bit soft compared to the bars that we make today. How did they know there was enough lye in that water? Well, they had a technique where they would get a fresh egg and they would put it in the water. And if they had a certain amount of the egg, and if it floated back up, and if they saw between a quarter and a nickel's worth of the egg bobbing up and down in the water, okay, that would say to them, hey, there's enough lye in this water, it's ready for soap making. Right now, we know the exact precise measurements for the lye that we can use um, in order to make a nice formula and make this soap exactly the way we want it, either how strong we want it, how mild we want it, uh, how hard we want the bar from all of those types of things. So basically, if you can see here, what we have is we have three different kinds of fats here. So these fats all get mixed together. One of the, the solid fat I have here is uh, soybean shortening. This is my coconut oil. Because it's so warm today, it's July, the coconut oil is turned into liquid. It's a liquid form. And this is some olive oil here, okay? So we mix those all together. This is the pile of fats that we're going to use. You can use any one of a number of fats, including shea butters and hemp seed and sunflower and all of these different kinds of oils. We use a lot of those oils in different soap making, and we have over the years done a lot of experimentation. On this side here, we have our powdered lye, which we measure out exactly. It's very, very toxic, okay? We have, we have a fan on the, the area. We actually have a, a fan upstairs that sucks the air out of the room. And so any of the fumes coming out can be sucked out easily. Make sure you do it, in, number one, in a well-ventilated area when you're mixing this, okay? And number two, that you're covered, that you're wearing gloves and you have long sleeves so you don't, because this will burn. Burn myself many times just getting little pieces of water and, and the lye on my skin, okay? And you don't want that to happen. And this is the water. So you mix these two together, always pouring 
the lye into the water so it doesn't splash around too much. Once you have, once again, this water and lye mixture and your fats, okay, then you combine the two, all right? Now, you don't want to combine them when they're too warm. You want to let them sit for a while. We just um, do the mixing and we walk away. Now, don't do this at home, especially if you have kids, for goodness sake. You can't walk away. It has to be in a place where people know that there's lye there and it's dangerous. So never leave the lye around your house or in your basement if you have children or people who don't understand. Lock the door. Nobody's allowed into that room while you're doing it, okay? We don't want anybody to get hurt. So you take these two, we actually, like I started to say, we walk away, we come back a couple hours later. We don't measure the temperature anymore. I can tell exactly by looking at the oils, okay, how cool the oils are. And I'll stick my finger in to see if it's a room temperature before I combine them. A lot of people want it at the exact temperature that they want it at. They're very precise. That's fine also if you're waiting around because you might have other things to do or you might be in a hurry. You know, in the summertime, too, I've seen a lot of people, they put ice in their water as part of their measurement to really cool this down so that they can get on with the soap making process. Now, the soap making process, it's a chemical reaction is called saponification, all right? This saponification takes these oils and it actually changes the composition, changes the composition of the fats, all right? So when you get done, you have soap. The whole thing is completely completely changed. And what you have is you have a soap fat and then you have some glycerol, which is also named, known as glycerin. These two things are the things that are actually in the soap after the, the process takes place, right? You have one molecule that still wants to be water. You have another molecule that wants to be fat. It's really an unusual thing. And I can't imagine thousands of years ago that they, you know, had any idea that this was what, what, what was happening. What they understood was that it worked this soap and it got them clean. And they didn't even do that much bathing back then. A lot of the soap making was made for cleaning clothes down by the river. Okay? So that's the whole idea. So you have this, you have this live water solution and this fat solution. So if you don't have this, right, you really don't have cold processed soap, which is the type of soap we make at the Soap Guy, which at 90% of the soap makers that I've been looking at over the internet over the last 10 years, this is how they make soap. It's a cold processed soap. All right, so if somebody asks you, do you have lye in your soap? You say, yes, proudly you don't. You do have lye. You cannot make soap without lye. Now, there is some melting pour soap. All right, melting pour soap is not cold process soap. Melting pour soap generally is made by gigantic companies. All right, and they, they, they send out 25 or 50 pound blocks to hobbyists, and then they, they actually melt it in a microwave or in a double boiler, and then they make the soap that way. They color it, they scent it. But that type of soap has all kinds of chemicals that you would never want in your soap, okay? So what I did before I came to do this little demonstration and talk to you guys a little bit about soap making is I just went out to a real popular site and I grabbed their ingredient list for the mountain pour soap. And I can't even pronounce these words. This is it, ingredients. All right, so the first one is coconut oil, of course. Now, the next one is sodium, uh, C-O-C-O-A-T-E. I don't know what that is. Sodium myristate. Uh, sodium laurate, sodium stearate, glycerin, sodium laureth sulfate, which is the thing that everybody's trying to avoid like crazy. Then it has some alcohol, some sugar, and some water, sucrose and water here. This is the type of thing that you get in a melting pour soap. This is not a natural product in any way, shape, or form, okay? This soap here, the cold process soap, and the way that most handmade soap makers make their soap, all right, where when the process is done, they have this fatty acids, um, which is really a soap salt, and then the extra ingredient is that uh, glycerol, which is actually glycerin, which that's actually the emollients that are make your, uh, your skin soft and make the difference. When you make it this way, there's no extra preservatives, right? There's no petroleum products. There's none of the things that people are trying to avoid and not put on their skin. All right, so just to recap, do we have lye in our soap? You betcha we have lye in our soap. Is our soap natural? It's about as natural as you can make it, okay? We don't leach the water anymore because we know the exact amount of lye that we want to put in, all right? Is there any lye left in the soap when the process is over? Absolutely not. The whole chemical composition of the mix is completely changed and turned into soap. I hope this answers your guys' questions. I hope it helps you answer your customers' questions. 
armed with a little bit of knowledge. There's tons of really cool information on the internet. You can watch this whole series of people showing you actually how they make their soap. I would suggest you go and do a little bit of study. You don't have to do much reading, just watch the process of somebody making some handmade soap and um, you'll be more informed and then you can inform your customers so when they come up to you and say, hey, is there lying your soap? You'll have an answer ready for them. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time.